Welcome to Titans for Life. My name is James, otherwise known as Big Sportsman on YouTube. Some of you may see me out there from time to time commenting and doing some things uh, on YouTube. I want to thank you for joining me today. This channel is dedicated to Tennessee Titans and the Tennessee Titans fan base. I ask only one thing on this channel, that you be nice to one another. If you're a fan from another uh, team, that's fine. Uh, we can have some discussions below. If you want questions or comments or anything like that, we can address them in the very next video. If you uh, just put uh, all, all your questions and comments down below. Um, I, as always, I want to um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Titans Rossi, Titan Upload Network, Titan Upload, um, uh, Lee Hillis and the Six One Five Podcast. Titans and Truth and uh, Titans Anderson. These guys were inspiration for for starting some of this and doing this. Uh, and they've been a tremendous help. Uh, many of them have been a tremendous help on how to do some of this stuff, how to get into this YouTube space and, and become a creator like them. Um, the intro and outro, we're still working on. We're still getting some things ironed out, going back and forth on some things that... Uh, that, that I wanted and, and kind of getting that finished up. It should be done very soon. Um, I just got back with him uh, yesterday uh, at the time of filming. So we're, 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 we're still working slowly but surely to get it, to get it right. We want to get it right um, the first time. Um, and with all that said, it's time to keep it real. Um, you're going to see me looking down quite a bit because I'm going to be referring to my notes because I've watched a ton of uh, video on uh, Zach Cunningham, and that's who we're here to discuss. But before we get into that, I want to get into uh, news that broke uh, late last night when I was uh, uh, writing part of the script and trying to get all this stuff ready and, and finishing up my film study on Zach. Um, the dumpster fire... <clears throat> um, that was in Jacksonville, uh, came to an end uh, late last night when uh, Urban Meyer was fired. And um, this this was something that was going to happen. It was bound to happen. There was nothing there was nothing that could be done at this point. There were just too many bridges burned. There were just too many red flags, too many things that were going wrong. Coaching staff didn't like him. Um, the players didn't like him. They weren't responding to him. And, and the thing is, is that everywhere Urban Meyer has gone has turned into this by the end of his tenure. This isn't the first time that this has happened. Just about everywhere he's gone, by the time he left, it was a dumpster fire. And in, in college, he, he couldn't recruit because other players weren't going out there and recruiting the guys that he needed. So by the time he leaves, the cupboard's bare at whatever college or university he's at because nobody wanted to play for the guy. You know, um, let me just put it this way. Um, if you're from the South, uh, you, you'll understand what I'm saying when you say, you know, Urban Meyer, really, let's just say, bless his little heart. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it about Urban Meyer. Bless his little heart. On to what we really are here for, Zach Cunningham. Let's talk about Zach Cunningham. When I watched his videos and I watched his, what, what he does, um, it, it is really interesting to see that versus other scouting reports, you know? So I went and I started uh, comparing, I, I went through my notes of watching all the videos and then I started comparing it to other scouts and what other scouts are seeing. And I'm not seeing some of the things that they're seeing. Maybe it's there and I just can't find it. Uh, maybe it was something that they saw at, uh, at a uh, practice or something that they saw at um, you know, the combine or private workouts or something like that, but it's not on, film. It's not on tape anywhere that I could find. So I, I don't know where they're getting some of this information. Maybe it was because of uh, how he looked in college compared to other college players. But when you start judging it by NFL standards and you, and you go into college and some of the things that he was doing in college, like his lateral movement in college seemed a lot better. And then you get him against NFL players and all of a sudden it doesn't look that good. So th there are things in there that you're going to, that you're going to hear from me that others are going to disagree with. That's fine. As long, you know, you know, you, we can disagree. Let's just not be disagreeable. Uh, first, I think that he reads plays extremely quickly. 
Um, he is very fast at, at reading and diagnosing plays. He can see what's going on and understand it quickly. He is uh, he's really good at that. Um, to me, I think. Uh, Everyone thinks that he has really good range for some reason. I think he has average range for the NFL at the linebacker position. He's, he's average range. Um, I think he's average at pass coverage. Just don't ask him to cover someone for, for very long. Others say that he's really good at pass coverage. I don't see it. Um, he is really good uh, matchup against most running backs. You know, of course, the elite running backs are elite running backs for a reason. Nobody really matches up on them. But for Zach Cunningham, with probably all but maybe three or four, maybe five guys in the NFL, he's going to be a really good matchup. You're going to want that matchup with Zach Cunningham. Uh, he seems to be... To me, when you watch this film, he seems to always be somewhere or close to the ball. He seems to be always around the ball. Even when the ball is, you know, not close to where he's supposed to be, by the end of the play, he's somewhere close by. He always seems to be able to get to the ball. Um, I think when I was watching his video, one of the things that I noticed is that he seems uh, really best suited to be... Um, uh, to, to, to be, he seems to be best against the run. He really, really, really is good against the run. And, and in fact, given, given time and the type of defense the Titans play, he could be elite against the run. He really could if he's got something there in front of him um, to, to kind of hold things down so that he can clear most of the muck. And if he's one on one with a uh, with an offensive lineman, he's going to win that most of the time. He's got really good hands. His hand placement is really good. His footwork is impeccable. So I, I think he can win one on one match matchups. Um, he has elite straight line speed. If he's coming straight at you, there is absolutely no way you're going to be able to outrun him. He is he is absolute great when it comes to his uh, straight line speed. So that when you see something like that where he's not having to go lateral, but he's just going straight ahead and coming straight at you, like in a pass rush situation or a uh, a run up the middle where he is the primary uh, where he's the primary run stopper, then I think you're going you know you're in a lot of trouble offensively if you're if you're there you're you're going to be in a lot of trouble because he's he's just going to eat you up. Um, where I differ from a lot of scouts is uh, they think he's very good in pass coverage, man-to-man -man pass coverage. I don't see that because of a few things. Uh, and one of them is he lacks lateral quickness to get to the flat. Okay, so if it's if it's a flat situation, he lacks that lateral quickness to really get there. But once he gets straight line and he gets turned, uh, you know, along that uh, along that line, and he gets his hips turned toward that. He can get there quickly, but the problem is, is before that, where he's having to shadow, kind of run laterally to the side, and he can't square up and get there. Uh, that becomes a problem. So his lateral quickness becomes a liability when you get into some of the faster running backs out there and the more elite speed type of running backs out there in the flat situation. He's, he becomes a liability. And the same thing goes with tight ends. When the tight ends are running down the seam, he doesn't have the quickness. Um, I, I did say he's fast, but there's a difference between fast and quick. Um, fast is you know your top end speed, how fast you can run. Quickness is how fast can how, how quickly can you get to your top end speed um he doesn't get to his top end speed um uh, within a step or two it usually takes him three or four steps to get to his top end speed so most uh tight ends that are elite that he would have to be covering if you were covering in in that situation are just going to be able to beat him in that you know that first two or three steps and they're going to end up with uh with a with a pretty nice pass in the middle of the field for a quarterback. And, and, and you know how that can turn out. That can turn out disastrous at times. So I just don't see how against the more elite tight ends and running backs, he's going to be able to match up. But what he really reminds me of, he reminds me of how Harold Landry plays. If you ask Harold Landry to play a lot of 
coverage is not going to work out well. But if you have to, if you tell Harold Landry to get after the quarterback, get after the running back in the backfield, that type of stuff, uh, you know, that's right in his wheelhouse. He's going to eat somebody's lunch, and he's going to look like you know he's going to look like a, a, a an all star out there. So. My, my question to the tie about about this acquisition is not was it a good or a bad acquisition for the price it was a great acquisition I mean you're not going to get anything uh, like his skill level and his skill sets for for this price the, the 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 question that I have is how where does he actually going going to fit in a defense that already has a Harold Landry type of player. I mean, because if you were to clone Harold Landry and give him a different name, this is the guy you're looking at. You're, you're going to be looking at a Zach Cunningham because that's that's who you're going to see as being a, a kind of a, a plug and play for Harold Landry. Um, it gives us some really good depth at that position, but you know, um, I just don't see them being able to play them both at the same time when you've got a lot of guys that are going to be coming back that in 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 that's not going to be a situation where he can do that. Now, where I can see the Titans are looking at is keeping them both fresh so that when you get into the postseason and you get into uh, the playoff situation, you you have either Harold Landry you can stick out there and or, or Zach Cunningham, and there's no drop-off in the level of play. And so they can stay fresh so that you constantly have to worry about either Zach Cunningham or then Harold Landry and then Zach Cunningham again and Harold Landry. And by the time you're done, you're, you're, you know, your, uh, your quarterback is your quarterback dropping back and passes is hearing footsteps, um, that, that may not even be there. But I think that that is the best case scenario for this is that, uh, the other thing is maybe they're, you know, maybe they're they're hedging their bets. You know, we've had so many injuries over over the course of the year. They're hedging their bets, saying, "Look, uh, he he's out there, and if something happens, we've got a guy that's kind of more plug and play to Harold Landry." Um, I, I'm I'm not sure what their thinking was, but it was a it was. I mean, you you can't, if you're the Titans, you couldn't pass this up. In fact, if you're a bunch of teams that passed up on this, I don't see how you justify passing it up. So my um, my feelings on the matter is, is that he is a ideal player for our defense in this position of uh, uh, you know at linebacker, but we already have kind of an ideal player in Harold Landry. So so now we have two. It's it's kind of, it's almost an embarrassment of riches at that position. Um, so that that is my assessment of him. He is really gifted in very in various things. He, he he's really good at some things. I and, and another thing that I saw, um, I can't remember which site it was, had him as a good fit for a four three. I really don't see him as a good fit for the four three. I think he is must he's better he's best when he plays in a position where he can move around a little bit. He can do a lot of more twists and he can do a lot more curls inside and that kind of stuff where, you know, in stunts where people don't know where he's coming from. Um, he, he's, he's, he's really good. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, and he's a great acquisition for the Titans. So that is what my assessment is of Harold, uh, of uh, Zach Cunningham. There you go. You see me because uh, I because I see so many similarities in their game. You, you just kind of go, oh, Her oh, yeah, yeah, it's Zach. Um, that's where I see things at, uh, where, where I see things are at. So uh, remember to hit that like button down there, and uh, you know, and 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 try to and try to watch some more of my videos if you can. Have a good time out there. Uh, join uh, and, and join Titans Rossi tonight. He has Mountain Mover on, uh, uh, Jalen Fly, and it's going to be a really really good show. I'm going to be watching on there. You're going to see me typing up some stuff and and getting into the discussion on that. Um, so remember uh, to tighten up that like button and always tighten up and keep it real.